We're the Lockwoods, and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise see only in textbooks and TV. For the past 10 weeks, our travels have been limited to a few short trips around the U.S. Why isn't really important, but we're about to kick off a crazy few final months of 2023, and it starts with a marathon journey that starts in Denver, Colorado, and takes us back to the capital of the Philippines. But over the course of two full days of airports, lounges, hotels, and taxis. This marks the beginning of a new hybrid home base setup that will take us back and forth almost every month between Denver and Manila so that we can branch out to explore even more countries around the world. Let's get started. It's another month and another killer travel day for the Lockwood family. This one's actually two days. It didn't have to be that way. We can fly straight from the United States to Manila but we actually need to fit in some additional flights so that we can re-qualify for our 1K status with United when we're flying to and from the US. So our first stop here is in LAX, Los Angeles, California, and we need to meet back up with Erin because she flew out here yesterday. Feels a little bit hectic going from a wedding to the airport to another party, uh, but I love travel days like this. I think the more complicated, the more exciting it is, so I thrive on stuff like this, but it is a little strange traveling without the family. I think it's even more strange to think that tomorrow they're gonna be traveling without me. That feels really, really weird. I just blew a bubble inside the bubble. You can probably tell. So I think she's in a lift on the way here to the airport right now, but we gotta find her and probably grab some lunch because we have a couple of hours until our next flight. To Honolulu where we're gonna spend the night tonight. Now again we wouldn't have to spend the night in Hawaii tonight but we wanted to do that because we're trying out a new episode format. We're gonna make a couple of episodes where we film the first half in Hawaii and then we're gonna film the second half when we're in the Philippines. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those when they launch in probably two to three weeks. Looks like some of my desk drawers at home. Plug this into something and it'd work. Actually the first thing we have to do is find our luggage and then we can find Aaron. Found it already. Two down. There it is. We got our bags, now we just need to uh, find our terminal. We actually have to check in again because this was a separate itinerary since Aaron wasn't with us. So we're gonna go get our new boarding passes, check our luggage again, and then hopefully find Aaron. My babies, look at your smiling face. <laughs> Good Hi, honey. I miss you, Mom. <laughs> now we're together again. Should we check in? Yeah, uh, sorry. We already checked in. I checked this in, I checked the bags. You know how to check in without me? This feels wrong. I feel like now I'm not needed. I should just leave the family. <laughs> Alright guys, ready? Let's go get some lunch maybe. Yeah? Maybe lunch is like French for donuts, right? There's a there's a, a convenience store on the right and I remember it. Just wait till we get up here. I can't believe you're memorizing airports now. This isn't even our home airport. Although to be accurate, he's memorizing airport candy stores. Oh, yeah, he probably couldn't find a gate. That's a, that's a good point. We have a couple of hours, so we're gonna hit the United Lounge. Surprisingly, we don't get lounge access because of our 1K status with United. We get lounge access because of our United Club card, which is one of our favorite credit cards, one of them that we take with us everywhere we go. Uh, we've actually got a page on our website that lays out all of our favorite credit cards and you can see that at followabc.com slash credit cards. And you know, I didn't know this when we first got our credit card, but it makes a huge difference because we are now eligible for upgrades on non-eligible flights, if that makes any sense. But it has been a huge, huge benefit and it does make a difference. If we book a ticket with award points and we don't pay any dollars, then we can still be eligible for upgrades. Without the card, that would not be the case. Three things that I really love about lounges, and that's the comfortable seating, the free Wi-Fi, and the free food. And this place has a ramen bar, like make it yourself ramen, which is really good. If I had one piece of constructive feedback for the lounges that we frequent, which would be the American Express Centurion lounges and the United lounges, it would be to have a rule around single people sitting in the little living room areas. We're a family of four traveling, looking for four seats together, and you can't find them because almost every area that has four seats is taken up by single people. Almost every lounge we go to, which makes it really tricky for us to sit together. So United, work on it. American Express, work on it. We've been here for an hour and a half. Let's grab our flight, catch our flight. Well, I'm so happy that we sat down for an hour before our flight because now we get to sit down 
for a five hour and 45 minute flight, we are going from LAX to Honolulu. Thank you. Thank you. And we actually are having a mini vacation there. We're gonna be spending about 24 hours, but to get there, five hours and 45 minute flight, I think I already told you that, but we didn't quite make the cut for an upgrade from our economy ticket. So we're always buying the cheapest flights that we can and then we're crossing our fingers and hoping that our status gets us that free upgrade. And usually, I'd say about 50% of the time we do. But every time we book our flights, we can immediately choose seats in Economy Plus, which is a little bit extra room and front of the economy part of the plane. And we only got three seats together, so Brooklyn has decided that she wants to take the seat that's by itself just across the uh, aisle and against the window over there. See you in Honolulu. It is so beautiful to fly into Hawaii, any of the islands. But we are now one third of the way done with our trip, if you think about the legs. Phil says it's a tripod, and I guess we're halfway through our trip because of Denver. A tripod? No, it's a four legs. It's, Phil says it's a table because there are four legs, if you include Denver. So now we're halfway through. I thought, since it's one itinerary really from LAX to Manila, that we would check our bags all the way from LA to Manila, but that's not the case. When you have a really long layover like this and it's still in the US, we're getting our bags, so we'll have them overnight for us. I actually packed this one for us to have overnight. Super unnecessary. I absolutely love this airport. It's really small and very unique, actually, because the baggage claim is outside, right? And it's windy outside. But yeah, we're walking to baggage claim. We're outdoors, and it's it's like a hallway. This is like a walkway to like another part of the airport. So it's sort of like an indoor outdoor airport. That's right, it's actually Kona Airport that has the outdoor baggage claim, but this one's still just as charming. We don't have a rental car today, we don't have a shuttle, so we're just gonna get a taxi to our hotel. We are just staying here the one night, so we wanted something that is really reasonably priced, but also something that was reliable, we knew would be a nice stay. So we chose Marriott, and we're thinking about getting into the Marriott, what is it called? The Bonvoy membership, or whatever, to, to rack up the loyalty points, because we are really big into loyalty programs. We feel like they make a big difference in value and comfort. It's just a 20 minute drive and it's Waikiki Beach, so beautiful area. Now even though we're just starting to build up our loyalty to Marriott, we're not starting from scratch here. Because we have the American Express Business Platinum Card, we automatically get gold elite status through that and we used our points to pay for the room today. I made a mistake. One downside to Marriott is that they have a billion different hotels and we're at the wrong hotel. We're supposed to go to the courtyard, Marriott. One nice thing about this is we get to drive past Waikiki Beach. We need to follow the yellow footprints to get to our- we Go in the van, we must go in the van. They're promising us candy, by the way. Now what do we do? <laughs> Cole has the right idea. Well, like I mentioned, we are about to go into town and film two halves of two episodes, and then we're gonna be back with you. So we're gonna get checked in here, drop our bags. So we'll be back with you guys in the morning to finish off this travel day. Whew, nice and refreshed after a good night of sleep. Surprisingly with the time offset, very minimal jet lag, I think. Don't hold your breath for those two little parts of the episodes that we were talking about last night, because we actually didn't get around to those. A little bit of a learning opportunity for us. So many different components to why that's gonna fall through, but we'll take care of them later. As for now, we're gonna head to the airport and they apparently have a United Lounge there. I think I've been there before with Reagan. And it's relatively small, but it'd be a good place for us to set up, get a little bit of work done for the next few hours and let the kids accomplish some of their school lessons before we hit the road again. We've got another two flights today that are going to be pretty substantial. So gotta get things started off right. That's right, it's all a learning experience. We learned that the Courtyard Marriott in Waikiki Beach 
It's not fantastic. Not a fan. I wish we were staying at the hotel we originally went to. I wish that we actually checked our bags all the way through. That would have been easier. Because I was prepared. But now we have to lug our luggage and find another taxi. Why do you think they call it luggage? Because you have to lug it. First step is we need to get a taxi. So we just called for one and hopefully it gets here quickly. Should be about a half an hour ride back to the airport. As long as there's not bad traffic. It is a Monday morning, 8 a.m. here, so hard to say. How do you feel so far, jet lag wise, coming halfway in the trip and adjusting four hours from Denver so far? But the tricky thing is, we're actually getting further from Manila time as we get closer, which in turn is closer because it's on the other side of the time. Yeah, I'm gonna have Phil explain it. Uh, well, I'll explain that in a minute, but for now, we our taxi's here, so we're gonna grab it. So at a very basic level, the international date line falls somewhere between here and Manila, and we're gonna be crossing over that. So the closer we get to the date line, the bigger the difference in time is, technically based on date, between us and Manila. So we're gonna go from being 14 hours behind Manila when we're home in Denver, and then instantaneously, we'll be right caught up on the same time as Manila. It's nuts. Math. Cole, what do you say math is? Mental abuse to humans. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Homework, Homework is uh, half of my, wait, half of my, half of my energy wasted on random knowledge. <laughs> I think they just prefer to learn our way, which is exploring the world. We're going to bring it back to travel. We're headed to the airport. We're going to be there in a little bit. Yeah, at the airport again. It feels like home. I think it really says something that we couldn't wait to get out of a hotel and get to the airport because we feel more comfortable at the lounges than we do in a hotel room. Thank you. Turns out, with this being kind of a smaller airport, we really can't check in yet anyway. It is now 8.45, our flight's not until 2.25, so we can't even check our bags, which means we can't even get our boarding passes and go through security and hang out in the lounge. So we literally are gonna have to hang out here for close to two hours. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do here. There are no restaurants, no shops in the main area of the terminal here until you get past security. So I think we're just gonna try to jump on some Wi-Fi and get a little bit of work done for a little bit until we can check in. And oddly enough, I still feel better about being at the airport than sitting in the hotel room, okay? All right, guys, looks like we can check in now. Yeah! It seems like we should be getting ready to board, but we're still about four hours out. It's earlier than we usually are to the airport, even at this point after being here for a couple of hours. I want to work for a company that lets you wear Hawaiian shirts to work. Oh, wait. I do. Come work for ABC. You can wear a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> Actually, you can buy our merch. We've got our merch store up, it's on our website, and you can also see it here below on the channel. We don't have Hawaiian shirts though. Okay, baby, if there were 50 people in the TSA pre-check line and only five people in the standard security line, which line would you get in? Pre-check, I'm not taking off my shoes. And if it's clear pre-check, you couldn't pull me out of that line no matter how long it was. That happens when you blow a really big bubble. We're looking for freeze-dried candy, because apparently it's a huge thing here. When Reagan and I flew through Honolulu months ago, earlier this year, she found this freeze-dried candy like Skittles or Starburst or Hi-Chews, and they are addictive. So we're gonna try to track them down. I can't remember which store we got them in, but there's so many around here, we've gotta find them somewhere around here. We're gonna find them. I just, I know it. I think I may have spotted freeze-dried candy up here, but it might be the same thing as earlier. None of them are freeze dried though. No. They have so far been unsuccessful. I think, I, I still hope that we will find it. We're gonna walk over to our lounge and maybe they'll have a beer, I don't know. Maybe we'll see it on the way. But I have high hopes. I have high hopes for the store because it has the Hawaiian vibe with all the necklace flower necklace things. But it doesn't look like it has much food. It's a flower store, but I love the positivity. You Come keep on. that cold. I love this airport. What do you like better, this airport or San Diego? This airport. Not, I love San Diego because of like the emotional feeling I get, thinking like we're coming home to Coronado, but this airport is open. It's indoor, outdoor. I feel the breeze on my face while walking to our gate. I oh, you know what my favorite is? It's actually the big island. Kona Airport. 
That one is gorgeous. When we were there, we, they had the most beautiful sunset and this huge rainbow was going across from one side of the airport to another in the horizon. Any luck, buddy? No. Lounge number two, not just any lounge, United Lounge number two. Number two for the trip, you mean? Yeah, not for, not in our life. Why does it say automatic? <laughs> Look, we actually got another little living Very room set up. Yeah. <laughs> I just brought you some water to tell you over. They have soft serve ice cream here. I just got the best news. We got upgraded to Polaris for free. Did not pay any additional dollars for it. We used some of our plus points, which we accrue with our loyalty. So we're gonna eat our free food, we're gonna get free Wi-Fi, and then we have our free upgrade. Polaris is business class. Polaris is business class, FYI. It's the lie down flat seats. So I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna try and get a lot of work done while we're in the lounge so that I can just enjoy, watch movies, uh, play on the entertainment system, lay down, take a nap, whatever I wanna do. It's a pretty good food selection for a United Lounge, I have to say, but I'm not surprised because Oahu has maybe my favorite food scene in the entire world. And if you're like, you're crazy, like we've got much better food in Japan or Philippines or whatever, understand that all of those influences exist here. So we had these really cool snow puffies, is that what they were called? Mm -hmm. Snow puffies that were from a Filipino bakery. The, obviously anything that's Japanese expired, like the masubis are incredible. Uh, they even have this, this is Kahlua pig. This is Hawaii's answer to the Filipino lechon. Slow roasted pig, it's cooked in an underground oven. In fact, that's what Kahlua means, cooked in an underground oven. That oven is called an emu. Smoky, salty, delicious. Anyway, check out that episode, Oahu. Now I am literally editing this episode, this very episode right now, because we're trying to get it done as fast as possible, to get it out as fast as fast as possible. And like I said, I want to enjoy my time in Polaris Lounge on the plane. Not Polaris Lounge. It's not Polaris Lounge. I always say that. Polaris seat on the Cabin. plane. Cabin. I can't. <laughs> so I'm going to work on that and we'll see you when we board. With pre-boarding, all United flights being one of the benefits that we get as 1K um, flyers and the United credit card holders and business class flyers today. Would you rather have a seat, be comfortable in the lounge until the very last second and then get on the plane? Or use the pre-boarding benefit, get on right away and sit on an airplane for an extra 45 minutes? Pre-board right away, hands down, because I, it actually happened to me on my way from Denver to LA when lovely. I boarded late and so the overhead bins, I had to put my bag up there, they were full so then I, I strategically wanted a seat up close so I can get off faster and get out of there quicker uh, but I couldn't do that because I had to go back further in the plane to get my bag and then backtrack. Okay good point but still even we almost never have carry-on stuff other than our personal item that would fit under easily so we never have to worry about suitcases as, as a general rule. That was a, a one-off but still I always want to pre-board because it's one of our benefits. Free benefit, what are we gonna do? Not use it? Very true, but my point number two, when you have Polaris, you wanna get on as early as possible, get situated, get relaxed, and enjoy your little pod. Well yeah, business class is a whole different ball game because I would rather sit in business class than sit at home on my couch. It's better. Movies on demand, you have uh, servers who are bringing you cocktails and food the whole time can lie flat and you have a better view. And on top of it, we didn't even pay for that service. It was a free upgrade. And now we get to do the pre-board. So when there's a really big plane, they will usually have two different doors you can go into. One is just for first class, business class, Polaris, and the other is for uh, the economy and the rest of the plane. I like it when we have two doors and we get to go in the first one. It's a very different bag than the ones we usually have. And what is it? I mean, it's... It's like maybe Hawaiian, but not. I don't think it's specific to Hawaii, but it's totally different. They used to use the little away luggage, the, the away suitcases, miniature ones. We're not gonna give you a full tour of Polaris class here because we've done that in another episode. You should check it out if you wanna see the whole experience, but we're gonna get settled in, maybe have a glass of bubbly champagne and uh, have some fun for the next eight hours. 
I'm in a special little giggly mood and I might even have a martini on this flight. We're in trouble. So then it'll be lights out for me and we'll see you when we get to Guam. We are in Guam. We are getting so close. We only have one more flight left and it's the shortest of all the ones we've got. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. What is that? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's like 6 p.m. here, although it'd be like 2 p.m. Denver time. So chronologically, we're right about there. Uh, I'm glad that I got about six hours, maybe five hours of sleep on that flight. I don't always want to sleep on business class flights. Sometimes I just want to enjoy the movies and the food and whatever, being able to have a really comfortable flight. But today I really wanted to sleep, so I got tons of Z's. Erin, on the other hand, apparently barely slept. So it'll be interesting to see what she feels like for the next flight and getting into Manila around 9, 10 p.m. I'm just too excited to sleep. I cannot wait to get there. I cannot wait for us to see our besties, our friends, Mom Duty, Rocio Nelvin, Mia Knox. We love you. How about you, buddy? What? Did you get a lot of sleep? I mean, I got like an hour and a half of sleep. Wasn't tired at all on this flight until I fell asleep. It's a shame that we don't get to hang out in Guam because we've never really been to this country and it's a territory of the United States. So it's got that comfy kind of tie-in for us. We'll definitely have to come back and experience the place. It looks beautiful. Beautiful, crystal clear, turquoise waters, the whole islandy kind of thing. Well, I would love to stay in Guam and we actually could do it versus going to any additional countries on this trip than we already have planned because mine and Phil's passports are getting really, really full. So we have to renew them. And I never in a million years thought that we would be traveling so much that we would totally fill up our passport books. I feel like it's a huge accomplishment. See, part of the problem with the passports is that you have some places, customs, like this one, there's nothing sensitive on there, where they stamp right in the middle of a page, you can barely see it. I think that page is pretty much toast at this point. Just wasted one. So you only have so many pages and then you have to get new ones. Uh, you have to get a new passport because you can't even get new page inserts anymore. You used to be able to just get additional pages that you could stick in there. Not anymore. So you really, I think, need to ask customs to be efficient. We're gonna ask them to like, can you just pick a different page and put it in a corner or something like that? I don't know if they'll do it. That's about as close as we come to seeing this island today. It's getting dark fast, so we got here just in time to get a little glimpse of Guam, a little teaser for us. I really want to come back here and really explore this area. What are you most excited about when we get to Manila? What are you most excited about doing? When we get to Manila? Yeah, like when on our trip in Manila. Oh, Ocampos. Yeah. One word, just Ocampos. Because I was like, when we get to Manila, I can't see the Ocampos, so I was probably sleeping. We're one traveling to Manila. You're welcome to more for those. It's funny that after all of this, almost two days of travel time, a four hour flight seems like nothing, even though in the States, that would be a pretty good flight for us. So I'm excited to get into Manila. Honestly, this little structure that we did for this trip, yes, it breaks things up, gets us a little bit of variety, but I think I prefer to just get it over with. No matter how tough it may be to like just power through, I think that's the way to do it, that's my preference. I'm glad we're getting our new PQFs for this though because we do need those for our status. But other than that, I would not prefer this model over just getting it over with. I completely agree. I feel like I got so excited about leaving on the trip and I feel like we should have been there a long time ago because I feel like it's been three days of travel for me. But I have some bad news. We have the same route when we come back late December. And I'm gonna keep editing through this whole flight, so we'll see you in Manila. Oh man, my eyelids feel like they are a thousand pounds. I'm so, so tired. I feel like I just realized that this has been about 45 hours of travel, so it's been a really long two days. 
and we haven't had a single delay. All the flights have been on time. I feel the same thing in my eyes, which is surprising because I feel like I got really good sleep on the flight from Honolulu to Guam. But by the way, it's two days for us, 45 hours. It's more for you because you actually flew to LA the day before we did. So for us, two days of travel to get here. For Aaron, really three days of travel with two sleepovers. But first things first, we still need to get off this plane and then we need to get through customs so that we can actually head into town. Have you noticed Colt's wearing a Christmas shirt? That is because we're arriving after September 1st, which means it's the Burr months in the Philippines. The Philippines celebrate Christmas the longest out of all the countries around the world. And it is called the Burr months because it's September, October, November, December. So they celebrate Christmas for four months. What about February? <laughs> you are hilarious. That's your best dad joke yet. I'm sure we are all going to crash, but we are staying in a condo this time. We're very, very selective when it comes to Airbnb, but we're really looking forward to this one because we're gonna be close to our friends, the Ocampos, and we're gonna be in BGC. And in another episode, we're gonna be condo shopping. So we're gonna see what we think of the building that we're staying in this time, and then we're gonna go and shop around some of the other buildings to see what we like. So nice to be back in the land of free luggage carts again. We're so happy to be back in the Philippines. And we want to find a condo in BGC because Manila is such a great hub for us to travel to other places. So we're looking for a condo because we want another second home base to travel from. First thing we do when we land in a new country is we hit the ATM machine so we have cash in that currency. I said it, didn't I? <laughs> ATM, not ATM machine. We already had 2,000 that I brought with us from the States from our last trip out here. It's nice to be able to have extra cash, take it with you and use it again on your next trip. Yes, Let's get a taxi. Hello, humidity. I think three. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's three. You have to go to school. <laughs> Yes, you have to do a lot of school. <laughs> <laughs> That's Two of the reasons we love Manila are the friendliness of everybody here and also the currency. It's much more affordable to be based out of Manila than it is to be based out of Denver. And a great example is this taxi ride. It is 500 Filipino pesos, which is about $8 USD. We are all freaking out in there because there's a 7-Eleven at the base of the building we're staying at. Smallest bills I have from the ATM are a thousand pesos, but our taxi driver doesn't have change because we're his first drive of the night. So we're gonna get some change by having Erin go into the 7-Eleven here and buy something because she's hungry anyway. I bet she's gonna get like a masubi or something. You watch, she's gonna have seaweed and rice, promise you. I just got yeah. some shumai. They didn't have it. It's not the best 7-Eleven. Right, this is Marvin. Marvin, this is Aaron. Um, nice to meet you. Oh, it smells good in here. This building that we're staying at is Forb Forbeswood Park Lane. It's a great location. BGC is just so beautiful and clean and safe. Ah, there we go. Oh, this is cute. Let's see the view. This is just like the pictures online. Oh, it's so pretty with the lights. I love the lights on the street. The Tipsy Pig, it's a restaurant we've been to before, is like right below us. And Dr. Wine, we're gonna go there tomorrow, is also right below us. So happy we're here. All right, let's see the rest of this. It's, it's a two bedroom apartment. We've got a kitchen, newly remodeled. Our bedroom, mine and Phil's, and then Brooklyn has a bedroom, and Colt is actually sleeping on the couch here. It pulls out into a bed. We're gonna fit perfectly here for this trip, and it's a great spot for us to do some condo shopping. So stay tuned, please subscribe, like, and comment. We wanna hear from you, we wanna see you. We can't wait for you to see the next episode with us. They apparently have never used this because it is still wrapped. Ta -da. <laughs> so two of the reasons why we love Manila is that everybody is two of Man <laughs> I don't, I don't have any of that on a roll. <laughs>